Okay, so let's keep moving. Right, so uh, we're moving on to a new topic. And uh, on this topic or on this section, we're gonna talk about Ether Channel uh, naman. Okay, so Ether Channel, one of the most important at uh, fundamentals ng switching or layer 2, uh, including layer 3, na kailangan natin matutunan at kailangan natin pag-usapan. So in, in this section, ang goal natin is to uh, understand kung para saan at kung ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng Ether Channel. We're also gonna talk about the different ports or yung mga anong meron sa sa mga ports or anong nangyayari kasi nga alam natin na binabundle or kumbaga ginagroup, ginagroup. So, uh, pag-uusapan natin kung anong meron dun sa mga ports ng Ether Channel. We're also gonna talk about the types of Ether Channel na meron tayo as well as yung other features ng, ng Ether Channel like load balancing and then some of the guidelines na kailangan nating tandaan when we are configuring or troubleshooting Ether Channel. And then, we're gonna do some configuration, of course, lagi naman yun, and then some troubleshooting at the end. Okay, so ito yung goal natin for this section, and by the end of this section, I promise na you'll understand and you'll know Ether Channel more than you know right now. We good? Let's get started. Okay? So, ay, lumabas. Okay, so... Nasaan na yung slides natin? Wait lang. And So, kapag sinabi natin Ether Channel, we are referring to a grouping. Okay? So, as you can see, grouping or binding ng mga physical interfaces. So, physical interfaces. Okay? Ibig sabihin, for example, I have a switch, um, 48 ports yun. Yung sabihin natin, yung huling apat na ports, ibabundle ko siya. Okay? So, igugroup ko siya into one. So, after ko siya mag-group as one, magkakaroon siya ng tinatawag natin na redundancy of course kasi nga yung apat na ports na yun nagpo-function na sila as one. Parang alam nyo yung walis, di ba? So, although marami siyang mga ting-ting, pero binibigkis natin yun, di ba? And then they function as one. Kasi isa lang yung nahawakan mo, yung nangwawalis mo. What I mean is, sa mga ports, for example, yung apat na ports nga ng switch natin, binandal mo lahat yung cable and then they are functioning as one. So, kung uh, 1 gigabit, for example, 1 gigabit Ethernet or 1 gigabit eth Ethernet, yung isang port, so they are functioning as 4 gigabit logical interface or group. Make sense? Good. Now, it increase one of the function aside from redundancy is redundancy, of course, and then increase in capacity. Kasi nga, once you bundle, for example, once you group uh, 1 gigabit Ethernet port, na apat, for example, you're creating a 4 gigabit interface. Get, get the point, right? So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka lang nagkakaroon ng redundancy kasi nag-i-increase ka pa or bukod doon, nag-i-increase ka pa ng capacity ng ports mo. For example, yung uplink mo papuntang access switches, papunta doon sa core or distribution switch mo, yun yung karaniwang ini-ether ch ini channel natin. So, I'll show you uh, that in a bit. Okay? So, take for example, this is a simple diagram or simple image natin. We have a distribution switch. So, for example, na lang yan. And then, yung access switches natin. So, alam naman natin, yung access switches natin, dito nakatusok yung mga end station. Diba? For example lang to ha. Okay, server, etc. IP phone, etc. Now, we may want to increase the capacity. Okay? The capacity aside from redundancy yung access switch natin na connected dun sa distribution. So, what we normally do is, yun nga, we bundle at least two or four physical interfaces nung access na yun when we are connecting to a distribution or to a core. Make sense, right? So, ang ginagawa natin, kinukonfigure natin yun, ginugroup or binabinding natin yung mga interfaces na yun so they function as one. For example, fast Ethernet 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, itong port na to, ang mangyayari, ibabundle ko siya. Okay, so mangyayari, isa na lang, they are functioning as one. Now, yun, kung may mag na isang interface, they're still functioning as a group, tatlo sila. So that's why it provides redundancy din. You get the point? And then when you look at the spanning tree protocol, for example, katulad ng diniscuss natin sa previous section, STP treats Ether channel port as one. Kaya ang, ang tinitingnan niya lang is yung group, o oh, I mean yung, yung logical 
interface which creates by by the group or by the binding na ginawa natin. Okay? So, in real world, ang application ng Ether Channel is, kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, katulad ng ginagamit natin na, na diagram from the start. So, let's take for example, dito tayo sa site. Okay, ito yung site natin. Okay, yun yung site natin, di ba? Now, yung mga access switches natin, as you can see, they are uh, connected, di ba? Du uh, dual, or sabihin natin, stuck tong core or distribution natin sa site. Now, as you can see, yung access 01 natin, gamitan ko yung green. So, dalawa yung connection niya. Ibig sabihin, nakakonect siya. Pwede, uh, pwede natin siya, or usually, ginagawa natin siya, naka-ether channel siya dun sa papuntang distribution or core niya para meron nga siyang uh, increase in capacity as well as redundancy. You get the point? So, ibig sabihin, kung dalawang gigabit Ethernet nga yung binandel mo, you have 2 gigabit Ethernet uplink papunta dun sa switch na yun. Or dun sa uplink. Make sense? So, mamaya, I'll show you the switch um, example para talagang makita mo. Pero I hope, by by showing you these fundamentals, you now understand kung, kung um, ano yung ibig sabihin ng Ether Channel and para saan yung Ether Channel. Okay, so that's basically it for this video. We're gonna move on to the next to discuss a deeper um, what do you call this? A deeper uh, example or a deeper meaning ng Ether Channel. And um, I'm preparing a real switch here para talaga ma-demo ko sa'yo ng mas maganda. So, hihimahimay natin itong video as always para hindi ka ma-information overload. Right? So, I'll see you on the next video.